Hi, this is Richard Wright, and I'm here with part two of the introduction to the SkyX uh, LTI. In this video, we're going to talk about system startup, how to initialize the SkyX uh, LTI and uh, connect to your equipment, and uh, go over a couple of the wizards with you. So here's the interface to the SkyX when, uh, LTI when you first start up. Connect the devices is the initial toolbox that's selected, and you can see here I have no mount, imager, or anything else. Um, connected. Now the LTI version uh, of the SkyX supports paramounts initially, but you will you will eventually be able to select other uh, other mounts as well. Um, we also support a single camera and optionally um, a single uh, filter wheel and uh, and an autofocuser. So setup for these devices, of course, is located here on the connected devices tab, and there's an icon for each device in each group, and you just select the icon and it brings up. The, um, the main imaging system setup dialog. This is the same dialog that's displayed in the SkyX Professional, uh, the full desktop uh, interface. So for our mount, I'm going to select the Paramount Mighty because that's what I have here uh, in the office while I'm doing this. It's raining outside, so we're not going to try to do uh, a live demo with uh, too much real stuff. For the focuser, uh, you can actually go ahead and select all of the gear right here in the same dialog or you could just pop out and uh, go in and select the uh, camera and so forth. So I'm going to select the uh, simulator for the camera. Sorry, the screen capture. I'm running this on a, on a laptop. If the screen is small, these things will show up. Uh, they won't be off the off center, of course. I'm going to select the camera simulator. You would select your particular camera. Uh, I forgot for the mount, we need to make sure we select uh, the port, that's, that's my port on the Mac, on the Windows, it would be one of the COM ports and it would show uh, the BISC TCS uh, control system. And just for completeness, we have filter wheel and a focuser. Let's go ahead and select uh, the filter wheel simulator. Oh, see, we're not connected to anything yet. Choose simulator, okay. And we'll go ahead and just pick the focuser simulator. Uh, as well for this. There we go. And of course, don't forget when you connect the devices, you may need to go into settings to select uh, a COM board or um, or, a, or a serial device of some sort or however you're, you're connecting to the device. So once we've set up our equipment list, we'll just simply click connect and it connects to all of our gear. And we get a green indicator, meaning we're ready to go. Red means uh, not ready to go or can't connect. Uh, we could connect to the Paramount, but of course the Paramount's not honed. Uh, naturally, the Paramounts all need to be honed before you can use them. Uh, when you power up, the button right next to Mount Not Honed, of course, is the button to hone the mount. And you may be able to hear the mount behind me. It's just going to home and make its little tones, and we know that we're all done. And there's our homing beeps, and the status changes to Mount Homed, and we have our familiar uh, sky chart with the, uh, with the Meridian Flip option. Uh, everything is ready to go. Okay, so the next thing you'll do, of course, when you you only need to set up your equipment one time, uh, unless you're changing uh, your gear around. So you, normally, when you set up for the night, you're just going to connect everything, and you'll be ready. There's also some setup wizards, and most of these. You only really need to do one time, but every time you set up your mount, you're going to need to do a rough polar alignment. So on the paramount, uh, we're going to use the, the homing sensors um, to do a, an alignment with uh, pretty much any object in the sky that you can slew to. That would be the sun even, or one of the planets. It's going to remind you, make sure the mount is level, and uh, if your mount is nice and level and you're ready to proceed, uh, it's going to give you a little reminder uh, to set your latitude appropriately. And then it actually runs a database query and it finds a couple of objects that uh, may be up right now. Now, Right now it's daytime, so the Sun and uh, apparently Mercury are, are good objects. You can actually see most of the planets in the daytime if you, if you know where to look or you're using a, a modest optical aid. Just let me warn you right now, Mercury may be very close to the Sun. Don't be, uh, don't be foolish uh, and start slewing around near the sun with, uh, without uh, adequate protection on your scope. But a sun spotter on a covered scope, or of course if you're using a solar scope, uh, you can certainly do a, a, 
a, a polar alignment, a rough polar alignment during the day using the sun. This is actually my preferred technique. Often I'll line up the Versa plate uh, on the sun before I even put the OTA on when I'm when I'm setting up. But we'll select uh, select the object of your choice. We'll just say the sun. Say OK. And uh, we will, I, oh, I did add this, good. I, I was wondering if I had remembered to do this. The sun is an excellent alignment target. Um, however, the sun is a, a very dangerous thing to point an optic at. So uh, I do add one last little thing. Are you sure you know what you're doing? I don't want to see any pictures of uh, cameras in flames or, uh, or, or stories of anybody going to the hospital. Uh, because they they did something stupid so if you're sure that all your gear is safe to point at the sun uh, if you've never done this before the answer is no just I'm just gonna say <laughs> no uh, but um, if you're ready click yes and you can hear them out behind me slewing to the sun right now it's pouring down raining so we're kind of kind of pretend so the wizard now just sort of tells you uh, this is the standard polar alignment technique we're just not using exactly uh, the same wizard that is in the sky. One of the things this wizard does too is it clears your T-point model out. So if your mount is level, it should be pointing at the sun. And we're going to move the mount, not using the joystick or, or controls from the software. We just use the alta, altitude and azimuth mounts knobs on the mount physically to adjust the mount so that your scope or your versa plate is pointing uh, at the sun as, as good as possible. Uh, actually, Mars was nearby. I don't know why the the DBQ didn't uh, why the database query didn't pull up Mars. I may I may tweak that some more. Um, but notice how close Mercury and the Sun are. I just I just really feel the need to emphasize as many times as possible uh, that uh, pointing a scope at the Sun is uh, extremely uh, dangerous if you are not very very careful. And by very very careful, I don't mean no. I won't point at the Sun. I mean, your scope is covered up because it is very unforgiving uh, if you just uh, if you just glance across the sun with a large mirror telescope. That's a lot of energy uh, coming off of that big ball of fire in the sky. Anyhow, once you have centered up the target, either in your scope at night um, or along sighting down the scope or down the versa plate, I've actually had very good success just sighting down the versa plate on the sun or using a sun spotter on a refractor that I have covered up with a uh, with a metal plate across the across the aperture uh, I can usually get pretty close uh, to the sun so uh, we're ready to go you just say yes or okay and uh, you have a rough polar alignment you're in um, you're in pretty good shape for the night potentially uh, with a small t-point model you you won't even need to do any uh, further alignments so at this point, we have a rough polar alignment, and for short focal lengths and fast optical systems, a rough polar alignment really is sufficient, especially when we add a we create a small T-point model and activate ProTrack, uh, which can be done with. Um, you, we're not talking about doing modeling all night; just uh, a few minutes at twilight, as soon as we can get some stars on our camera we're ready to go. Of course, in order for all of that automation and niceness to start kicking in, uh, we need to be able to take pictures and detect stars. And uh, other than darkness, we need to be somewhat in focus. So our next video will be on how to get focused with At Focus 3. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kevin Lagar from Skywatcher USA, and he is going to do a solar safety demonstration. Kevin, what do you have here? This is the 20 inch Dobsonian. This is a box. And there's a reason. And that's the sun. And that's the sun. And every telescope comes with a label that says, warning, do not look at the sun. And you're going to show us why, right? There is yes. a reason. All right. I'm Let's... hoping I will not light the shroud on fire from excess. That'd be a much better video, though. Yeah. Let's see. What's going on here? Hold on, I You're in... the sun. Stick your hand up there. That might help yeah, you yeah, find it find better. It immediately. It'll be really warm. Do you have a dust cover on that? Oh, there, there, we, there we go. Yes. I see some light. There we go. Oh, yes. Now hold it up there longer. I see some flames. Yes. Oh, what a lovely smell, too. For all of you guys that used to do this to anthills, 
we win. So do not look into the sun with your remaining eye. <laughs>